not just you saying, I want to be a part of making sure that Alan Bagg is able to go and preach the word, but there's a return on that. Something's going to happen in your life and it empowers you, it makes you more effective as a believer, more effective in your part as a partner. And we're going to spend some time this week having a look at that. Hello, my dear friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bagg. This week, I want to talk about something that is so exciting to us as the body of Christ. And it's a term that very few people actually know about. They may have heard it, but what does it mean to you? And that's the prophet's reward. Praise God. It is a revelation. And that's something we need to understand. The Bible tells us that even the whole gospel was hidden from the enemy. The Bible, in fact, says that had the prince of this world known, they would never have crucified Jesus. In other words, when God revealed that Jesus would die for our sin, it's all the way through the Bible. The prophets of old spoke about it. But it was written in a way that Satan would not even see it. The enemy would not be exposed to it. It was written in what we call a mystery. And so that God could bring it to pass that when Jesus died on that cross and rose from the dead, it gave birth to a worldwide church of God empowered by the Holy Spirit. When the devil looks at it and thinks, man, that was in the Bible all the time. I didn't even see it coming. And the reason why God wrote it in a mystery was to make sure that the enemy could not stop it. But praise God, you and I today, according to Ephesians, tells us that the mystery has been revealed to us. So now that you're born again, you can go read the Bible and there are things that are written there. And you, before we were saved, we would go and read about it. I knew all about Noah and Moses and all the stories we knew from Sunday school as kids and saw in movies. But the revelation of the kingdom of God only came once we were born again. When you're saved and the Holy Spirit begins to open up passages of Scripture and reveal and you go, wow, never saw that before. That's called revelation. Remember when the disciples asked Jesus to show him the kingdom, where's the kingdom? And he said, the kingdom's not over there or over here, it's within you. In other words, to understand the kingdom of God is going to take revelation knowledge. And once you see into the revelation, you go, it was there all the time. Now, here's the thing. As long as we are trapped into natural knowledge, just reading what the Bible says and just following just the letter of the law, that's where Jesus spoke to the scribes and Pharisees very often. He said, your traditions have made my word null and void. That's the problem is sometimes people who are not necessarily born again or not filled with the Holy Spirit or don't have sufficient revelation in an area. They may take a scripture and say, this is what it says and that's what this says and lock people out. In other words, you follow this thing exactly the way it's written here and not see into the depth and the strength and the revelation of what's been shown through that scripture. Then you can lose a lot of the truth. Now, Everything that's written is accurate and everything is correct. But when you tie it together, you'll see that this scripture ties up with this scripture, with this prophecy and the way it was revealed over here. And you put it all together. All of a sudden, you see a picture far bigger than just this one aspect of it. And that's what we're talking about here, looking into the revelation. And I want to have a look at what is this prophet's reward? Because it's something that has been misunderstood can even be abused. But when you discover the, the depth of the revelation of what the prophet's reward is, when somebody sees it and taps into that and can walk in the fullness of it, they become far more empowered. That word when we talk about being blessed, where somebody is empowered by the presence of God, where the anointing begins to manifest and remove burdens and destroys yokes, and you step over into walking in what we call the glory of God, the full manifestation of God's power, where even transcends faith and even the anointing, where you see God's very presence manifesting in a way He is now moving and He does exactly what He needs to do because now He has free passage and 
is being given the atmosphere and, and, and the person that's believing for that has made the atmosphere and the environment in a place where God knows that He moves now, everybody there is going to receive it. And in that power, in the full revelation of the glory of God, we can see all of God's will manifesting without hindrance. Very often it's not that God doesn't want to move. It's when somebody says, it's just the same way when Jesus went back to his hometown, the Bible says he could do no mighty work there. Now, we're talking about Jesus, the Son of God who did phenomenal miracles. Why could he not do any mighty work there? The Bible says because of their unbelief. So the way to combat that is through teaching. The Bible says a few verses later that he went about teaching. And as he taught, what happens when you taught the Word of God? Faith rises. Faith comes, and as a result of that faith, you go, okay, I'm seeing what he's saying here. Then you're willing to step over into it. And when you step over into it, you'll find the presence of the Holy Spirit, that anointing that removes burdens, destroys yokes, will begin to work. But there's even a deeper place where you say, I just trust God because He is God. I'm going to let God be God. God's able to move powerfully because there's an atmosphere of belief. And that's where we talk about revelation knowledge. And here's the thing is that many people are already walking in a place where they can experience the prophet's reward and yet don't even know that. They don't even know they <laughs> qualify for it. And if you don't know you qualify for it, then how do you call on that? And how do you make sure that it manifests in your life? So we're going to take some time this week and have a look at what is this prophet's reward and how you also can tap into it, that God has made it available to you through the powerful concept of partnership. Let's have a look here at Matthew chapter 28. This is Jesus speaking, and just before He's about to leave the earth and return back to His seat in heaven, He says here in verse 18, Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me, in heaven and on earth. Now remember, when God created Adam, He gave him dominion over all the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. And Psalm 115 verse 16 says that God has given the earth to the sons of man. So Adam was given all authority over earth. He lost that authority when he submitted to the enemy, but Jesus came and he got that authority back. But at the same time, when he conquered the devil, rose from the dead, the Bible says in Hebrews that God now has given him the name, the name above all names, he's inherited that name. And now that he has received that authority, he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So as a man, he got back the authority that Adam had lost. And then verse 19, he says, now you go. So now that he has this authority, he immediately hands that authority back into the hands of man, the way man was supposed to work with it in the book of Genesis. In other words, right from the beginning, man was supposed to be in authority. Jesus has got that back. And he gives this instruction, go therefore and make disciples of all the nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. Now, something I want you to notice here, he doesn't say go and make a religious organization. He says go make disciples of all the nations. Now, that's referring back to Genesis chapter 12, where God was telling Abraham that he would bless him, that he would make him a great nation, and that he, as a great nation, would be a blessing to many nations, that he would bless those who bless Abraham. Now, I want to get a hold of that, because when God created man in the garden, he created him to have fellowship with him as a family. He didn't start a religion. When he spoke to Abraham, he said he would bless him, make him a great nation. Didn't say he would make him a religion. And then we find out 
that now Jesus is saying, go make disciples. Now, disciple in, in, in its raw form just means student, like a pupil at school, a student, someone who studies. He says, go and make people studiers of the Word of God and so that they can also follow this way. Teach them to observe all that I have commanded you. Now, when Jesus commanded them, He didn't command them into a religion. In fact, when you look at the religious folk, they were the ones that had the biggest problem with Jesus. Now, we need to understand what I'm saying here. We as a body of Christ, it's not like God had all these different religions and now He was introducing Christianity as another religion. No, Christianity is not supposed to be a religious organization. Now, we'll have organizations because that's what the government requires of us and we, can, we need to do certain things that are legal and correct and accurate. So you put together an organization, but we as the body are a family. We're a nation of God. The Bible calls us ambassadors. And if we understand that, don't think of church just as a religious institution, something that I do on a Sunday and then Monday to Saturday just go about my other life and then come back to this institution called church. No, you and I are the church. We are the living organism, the body of Christ. And as the body of Christ, Jesus wants us to understand His kingdom and how His kingdom works. And He's saying here, observe all the things that I have commanded you. Now, He's not talking about keeping the Ten Commandments as laws, because we understand our salvation is not based on keeping the law. Praise God. By grace we've been saved by faith, and that's not of ourselves. It's a gift from God, not because of works lest any man should boast. And so we understand that when we look at the laws, they are God's governing guidelines, not even guidelines, they're commandments, but the commandments of God are not to get us eternal life. We've already proved that you and I are not able to keep the full law, but Jesus is. He paid the full price. He gave His life so that we could have eternal life, and He chose by His grace to forgive us. Every time we break a law, we can go back to Him and say, Lord, you know what I did? I sinned you. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, I confess that sin and He is faithful and just to forgive me and cleanse me of all that sin. And at that moment, I'm cleansed and I'm made righteous. Now, I'm able to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior. So what did He command? He commanded to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength and all your mind. And then He said, love others the way I love you. And so together, as a body of Christ, we want to share this love. We want to teach the world and the grace of God that God is not about you following a religious system to try and prove an unsatisfiable God that if you break any laws, He's out to kill you. No, God loves you. He set aside all sin. He didn't just set it aside. He paid for it in full to remove it. So that if we can understand that and come to that knowledge, we can be saved. Now, you and I, if you've already given your life to Jesus, you are saved. If you're not yet saved, we're going to give you an opportunity in a moment. But yes, the point that I'm making is that once you are saved, it's your and my responsibility to get out there and to teach others, to help others get this word, to help others understand how much God loves them. And if we can get that word into as many lives as possible, then we can be a part of what Jesus did yet. When He had given His life to save mankind, I want you to notice something. He didn't stay behind here in His body so that He could personally oversee it. I mean, you know, sometimes people say, if you want something done, if you want something done right, do it yourself. Well, Jesus didn't do that. He didn't stay behind and say, well, now that I'm starting the church, I better stay behind and make sure that it's done right. In fact, he said, it's necessary for me to go. And when I go, I'll send the Holy Spirit. He'll remind you what I've been taught. He will guide you into all truth. He will reveal to you things to come. He will teach you all things. And so by his grace, he's leading us as a church to become efficient as a body to be able to reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ which tells me that you and I cannot do it on our own. 
I cannot do this on my own. Right now, I'm busy teaching and I'm reaching into homes and into lives with this gospel of Jesus Christ. But the only reason I'm there and I'm able to reach into that home is because of partners. And we've got partners all around us that pray for us, that minister the Word of God, that give into this ministry generously so that we can keep preaching the gospel. We've got people that send me out. I'll go and do meetings and outreaches and, and missions. And we as a church are continuously sending people, people that are going to other countries and plant churches. We go into prisons so that we can minister the Word of God to those that are held captive in the natural so we can set them free in the realm of the Spirit. That when they are released from the physical bondages of prison back into society, they are redeemed children of God, able to walk in the full power of the gospel that Jesus gave His life for. That they can also become effective and not used by the enemy any longer. We go into hospitals seeing people healed and delivered and, <laughs> and, and set free. And before they even have operations, walk out of that hospital healed and whole. Now, how does all of that work? It's because we are mobilized as a body, each part doing its share. Now, when we do our part, just the same way you may be at home watching this program and God moves on you to partner with us, then by becoming a partner, you are part of this great work that even if you yourself don't ever go to a meeting that we go and preach, if I'm in your area, I'd encourage you to come and be a part of the meeting there. But sometimes we may go into a foreign country and have an outreach there and win hundreds, thousands of souls to Jesus. By you sitting at home and having partnered with us, it's just the same as if you had been there. Now, there's a reward to that. God sees that. It's not just you saying, I want to be a part of making sure that Alan Bagg is able to go and preach the word. But there's a return on that. Something's going to happen in your life. And it empowers you. It makes you more effective as a believer, more effective in your part as a partner. And we're going to spend some time this week having a look at that. Because within this knowledge of who Jesus is and what He's done so that we could have eternal life, and He has been given all authority, now He's transferred that authority to you and to me. We want to make disciples all over the earth. And we're doing it. And so are you. As a partner with this ministry, you are now part of this anointing. Jesus said, all authority has been given to Him. You go therefore and make disciples. Then obviously the person that we make a disciple of then is now part of this great flow of authority. So the authority that Jesus has given me, I walk in that authority. Then as I make a disciple, someone says, I want to learn from Alan Bagg. You are now a disciple of Alan Bagg, but a disciple of Jesus. Then that same authority will flow through from the head into the body and all the way to the very extremes of the body. You think about my finger. It gets nutrition and blood flow from the extension of all my, the rest of my body. And so as long as my finger is part of the body, my hand gets to enjoy the privilege of fingers, my arm does, my body, my head. We all enjoy the privilege of the fingers. And the fingers are helping make sure we get everything done. And so we're going to find out what part of the body are you? And not only that, how you are functioning in that body and what the result is in your life. So I want to share with you as a partner with this ministry what you are a part of and also what it means to you. Have a look at this. When you partner with Allen Bag Ministries, you are joining forces with a ministry focused firmly on equipping believers so they can flourish in their ministry and calling. Your partnership with Allen Bag Ministries helps provide the many platforms needed to minister God's powerful word practically and in the many ways it's needing to be received. Your partnership is helping many viewers across the world receive encouragement and faith building word through our television program, Wisdom for Life. As our partners, you are assisting many women to step into their God-given purposes and be a significant difference in the community. 
You are part of supporting and training children in the ways of God, so they are adequately prepared for kingdom living as children of the Most High God. Your partnership also reaches into the lives of many youth and young adults, equipping many youth to pursue God and allowing Him to quench their thirsts. Your partnership also helps many people overcome strongholds, as well as help transform marriages and strengthen relationships in many homes. When you partner with Allen Bag Ministries, you are also part of many students being trained on Christian Family Church International Bible College here at the Bay. Allen Bag Ministries helps set many free in prisons, helps bring healing to many in hospitals, and feed many hungry in creches and schools on a weekly basis. As partners, you help us equip many in the community through various skills development programs, practically equipping many with entrepreneurial skills to help improve their value in the marketplace. These are some of the many platforms your partnership is impacting. For those who are already partners with Allen Bag Ministries, thank you for the amazing difference you are helping us make. If you would like to partner with Allen Bag Ministries, please contact us at these details and we will assist you with any information you may need. Thank you for your partnership. Together, we can make a difference. It is very interesting that as you read through the New Testament, the various letters that Paul wrote, how dependent he was on his partners, that he would mention things like, pray for me, with that I may speak the word with all boldness, that he would encourage them to understand that because of what they're doing, he was able to continue his work, and that there was in fact a two-way communication with that partnership, that they had positioned themselves to be able to receive from him and that God had also ordained a promise for their lives. And so we want to be a part of what God is doing in the kingdom of God and for every person to understand that each one of us has a part. And so when you come into a revelation of this partnership and step over into it, so much of the kingdom of God has opened up that before we may not have even knew was available to us. And so we want to invite those that have been moved by this program. You believe the work that we're doing. You believe in the work that we're doing. You believe that what we're doing is accurate. We're reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you want to be a part of that. Now, you may not be able to be the one that goes to preach the gospel. You might not be able to win masses to Jesus. But by partnering with us, you're doing that. You're reaching the masses. You're getting people saved. And there's a tremendous reward as a result of that. And so as you make a decision today, I'm going to partner with Allen Bag Ministries. And we're going to get this gospel out there. We're going to get it preached and change the world for Jesus Christ. Then we invite you to be a partner with us today. All you need to do is call us on those details. Write to us at that address over there or go online and you can fill in a form on the, on the online facility. It's right there. It's very easy to use. And then as soon as we got your details, we're going to send this to you. It's our partner pack. It has a certificate of partnership in there. Tells you what the vision is and some specials and everything. You know, just by being part of with us, we want to bless you and, and take you along with us that you can experience everything that we've experienced the joy of reaching people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I also would like to send you this power of partnership. It's a tremendous series. We are taught on it in detail. It's going to help build and encourage your faith. So get a hold of that today. And if you've not yet given your life to Jesus, I want you to know He loves you. You know, being a partner is not just about tying up with the ministry and, 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 and giving towards it and praying. It's being in the body of Christ. It's being part of the kingdom of God. Each part has its share. And if you're not yet saved, I want you to know that God has already paid the price for your sin. He already died for you. That's how much He loves you. And if you happen to switch on the channel here, you're just skimming past. It's not by accident that you're hearing my voice now. I want you to know God loves you and He's calling you home. Today is your day of salvation. So how do I do that, Pastor Alan? The Bible says if you believe with your heart that Jesus is raised from the dead and confess with your mouth that He's your Lord and Savior, you will be saved. And so I want to lead you in that prayer right now. There, while you're watching, wherever you're sitting, just say this out loud with me. Say this, Dear Jesus, thank you. I know you love me. You died for my sins. You paid the price in full. 
and then you rose from the dead. Today you are alive. I believe that. I call you Lord. You're my Savior. From this day on, I live for you, to serve you, to worship you. One day I will leave this earth and stand in front of you and see you face to face. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Praise God, my friend. You are born again, a child of God. Now, I've got some things I'd like to send you. I'm going to sow this into your life. It's First of all, this card's going to explain to you what's happened. And now that you are a Christian, some guidelines. This is a study program that's going to help you read through your Bible from cover to cover in one year. Wouldn't that be awesome? And then also this CD, My Christian Passport Out of This World of Failure into His Kingdom of Victory. That's a free gift I want to give to you. You can just call us on this, that phone number, write to me at that address. And as soon as we got your details, we'll send that to you. And we'll even pay the postage on that as well. So welcome to the family. That's all we got time for today. I look forward to being together with you again tomorrow. This is Alan Bagg reminding you Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. We invite you to visit us online at alanbaggministries.org. On our website, you will discover who we are as a ministry, as well as the call and purpose the Lord has placed on the lives of Alan and Janine Bagg. You will also learn about the various initiatives and ministries that Alan Bag Ministries make use of to reach every tribe and tongue on the global scale. If you've just started your journey, you'll find some great material that will help you build your faith and get you started on your walk with Jesus. If you'd like to be part of the Alan Bag Ministries family, you can also connect with us on our website and be part of our e-family that meet together every week. At allenbagministries.org, there is plenty of information about partnership, as well as many options to come alongside this ministry as a partner. Whether you're interested in information about starting your journey as a believer or growing in your understanding and faith, if you're looking to participate in our services and television programs, or if you're interested in getting hold of some great study resources, whether you're looking for information about Allen Bag Ministries, or if you'd like to come alongside us as a partner, we invite you to visit us at allenbagministries.org so that we can be part of your community and help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org equipping believers so they can prosper in their ministry.